I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesofAccounting.com Chapter 7 on Receivables. In this first module, we will consider the costs and benefits of selling on credit. Receivables may arise from a variety of claims against customers and others, and they may be classified as current or non-current on the balance sheet based upon the amount of time anticipated to collect the receivable. Trade receivables are those that arise from the sale of products or services to customers. Those amounts are carried in an account receivable account. That amount is almost always carried as a current asset on the books. However, other receivables, non-trade receivables, might arise from items like advances to employees, loans to employees, deposits with utility companies, and so forth. Those non-trade receivables could be found either in the current asset section or sometimes in the other asset section if there's an extended period of time that's expected before they're collected. Let's look further at credit sales. Credit sales can be the result of direct extension of credit by a vendor or indirect extension of credit through a bank or credit card company. In considering extending credit, one must consider the costs. For direct credit that's extended by a vendor, the vendor would ordinarily need to investigate the credit worthiness of a customer, perhaps have a credit department or do credit checks, continually monitor collection activities, and the vendor would forego the use of money while the receivable is outstanding. There are some benefits, however. Oftentimes, receivables generate interest or earn interest on outstanding amounts. And extending credit certainly entices customers to buy when they might not otherwise be prepared or ready to buy. Let's look closer at the accounting for credit card sales where the company decides to accept a bank credit card or other type of credit provided by an independent third party. Credit cards have been developed by banks and financial services companies. They're widely accepted, as we're all well aware. They eliminate the necessity on the part of the merchant to maintain a credit department and do billing and collection activity. Examples include MasterCard, Visa, American Express, and so forth. However, there are some costs for these credit cards. Credit card companies charge significant fees. It's usually based on a percentage of the sales. They can range from 1% up to as much as 3 or 4% in some cases. The credit card companies also charge the purchasers interest and so forth if they don't pay on a timely basis. So the credit card companies have a very robust business model, but they do bear the risk of non-collection. They do have the activity of billing and collection. Some bank card transactions are essentially the same as cash. So let us look here at how this would work in an example. Rayan Company sold merchandise for $1,000. The customer used a credit card. There was a 2% fee charged at the time the card was used. And so in this journal entry, while the company has a $1,000 sale, they also have a $20 expense or service charge they need to record or offset to reflect the $980 net. Oftentimes with bank credit card companies, there's real-time or virtually real-time, maybe a batch processing at the end of the day. So the merchant receives their money within a day or two of the actual sale transaction. That's a great benefit to the merchant, although they're paying that, that sometimes very significant charge for that benefit. If a, uh, if a customer used a debit card, it would essentially be the same type of transaction. The debit card would simply be drawing directly on the customer's bank deposits rather than through a credit card company that then bills the customer. Some other type credit cards may involve delayed collections. Uh, typically, American Express would fall in this category. In the textbook, I refer to these as non-bank credit cards. Uh, there's a service charge that is associated with these transactions. It might be recorded at the time of sale, or it might be recorded at the time of collection. In this example, I've got a $1,000 sale, so I'm crediting sale $1,000, and I don't yet know the amount that I'm going to collect net of the fees that are charged by the credit card company. So I recorded a $1,000 receivable. However, later when I collected, the credit card company only provided $980 to me in exchange for that receivable. That time I recorded the $20 service charge. Had I known or been able to estimate the service charge, I might have recorded it earlier to have a proper matching of revenues and expenses. As a practical matter, it may be 30 or 60 days before the merchant actually collects their amounts due on an American Express type transaction or a non-bank type card. And so you can see there are costs and benefits when a company extends credit directly to a customer or even when they choose to accept a credit card from the customer. This is a choice that every business needs to make and consider and weigh in their business model as they evaluate their particular credit policies and, and ways to enhance customers' opportunities for purchasing from the company.